Alright, hey, how's it going, guys? It's Jemiah Miller again with Miller Lifestyle Fitness. And today I'm bringing to you guys how to build a bigger and better chest. Basically, this is what I do for my chest training. And I do chest and arms on the same day. So, this is just the chest portion of my workout. Like I said before, I usually start off all my workouts with a warm up. And this is a warm up, a warm up prior to getting on the bench. Um, I work out the, I warm up the opposing muscle. So I would warm up my back muscles, my lat. So I'll do some pull ups. I'll go ahead and do some dips to warm up my shoulders and my chest. And then I'll go into my um, warm up sets. Usually I'll start off with incline press because that's what I want to put emphasis into on building. And that's what I'm going to have the most strength at the beginning of my workout now I don't believe in holding back on any sets or any workouts at all but initially that first workout is where you have the most energy of course so I like to do incline press or incline bench first as you can see I'm starting off with the resistance bands I did one more set with the bar and all I'm doing is just making sure that I'm getting my form down correctly I did a second warm up set, 135. What I'm doing with that second warm up set, that first and that second warm up set, is to make sure I have that mind muscle connection. Once again, make sure the form is always the same, always correct. And notice I don't go all the way down to my chest at times because I'm trying to alleviate using my interior delts, which is my front delts, too much. I already have long arms, so if you have those long arms, going all the way down to your chest will eventually add using your front delts so you're trying to leave your front delts out of the movement as much as possible this is my third set right here at 185 and I would call this maybe a warm-up getting ready to go into my working sets like I said before I pyramid up to my working sets. This is probably set number three, as you can see. This is the last one set going into my working set. As you can see, once again, I'm not touching my chest. Keep my butt on the pad, arch my back. Keep my scapula, which is um, in your small of your back, in the middle of your back. Keep that contracted. Shoulders and rear delts to the rear back and press right here you can see this is my first working set with 225 now like I said before what you want to do is what I usually do is my first workout for the day or the first workout for that body part would be what I'm trying to put emphasis into so if you're trying to work your lower pecs more, you can start off with decline. If you want to work your upper chest more, you can start off with incline. And in all my training programs or routines aren't always with resistance bands or stuff like that. I, have, I will do progressive overload training, so I'll progress going up or as the weeks go by. So. Usually I would start off with just doing dumbbells maybe or just regular bench for a few weeks. Right here is probably the peak of my training. I'm probably in probably the peak of being back in the gym. I'm at the peak so that's why I'm adding those resistance bands because I've progressed to that point where I peaked at no bands and now I'm moving on to resistance bands. My second work is set. I got a uh, spot by uh, a good friend Bruce here in the gym. Form is the same all the time. As you can see, what those resistance bands do is help me with locking out at the top of that movement. If you haven't noticed, going down is not an issue. It's a controlled movement going down on the eccentric, and you want to have that contraction going up or that extra tension going up on the concentric movement. This is my last and final look at set here. Mm -hmm. 
So all together, three warm-up sets and three working sets. For a total of six sets. But of course I wasn't finished there. Usually my first workout I'll, I'll take almost 20-30 minutes to complete my first workout. So after that, I decided to induce more pain on myself and do a drop set with pauses at 135. Drop sets are very popular, everyone loves doing drop sets. It helps you flush blood into the muscle fibers at the end of those big um, compound sets. So that's what I'm doing right here, but what I'm trying to do is stretch and activate my um, upper st sternoclavicular area, which is the top portion of my chest. I'm trying to activate that as much as possible apply a lot of tension to it on those pause reps and then right after those pauses I went into burnout <laughs> then after the burnout I took a couple second breaks which is basically a press pause then I finish off with that burnout. I was the this is the first um, workout for the bigger and better chest routine. It's all in all, I'd like to say it was about nine sets, three working sets, three on the drop, three warm up sets. Next, we're gonna move on to. Decline hammer strength machine. I love hammer strength machines. I wish I could have them in every gym. Now the reason for me to turn my body sideways is to apply more emphasis on the pectoral muscle and to alleviate using too much of my own front delts once again. Um, basically picture yourself doing a fly and what you're doing on those flies is bringing that your arm across the body which in turn helps you to activate your pectoral muscle a lot more which is what I'm doing right here I'm getting that stretch and I'm actually getting a better squeeze to activate my pecs a lot more now that was my first warm set this is my second set two plates same thing turn my body sideways same concept applies if you're doing any bench you want to keep your butt on the pad, arch your back, what I'm trying to do at an angle, I'm still trying to arch my back, and trying to keep my um, scapular, scapula and my lats activated in the back, and contract my um, pectoral muscles, and try to keep my shoulder out of the movement as much as possible. This is set number three, with three plates. And what you're going to see here is me failing, basically. And what I'm doing here is what I realize is that, okay, three plates with the resistance advance is a little too much. So I took them off. And there's no, there's nothing wrong with realizing or noticing or understanding your limits when it comes to training, especially if you don't have a spotter. With a spotter, I probably could have knocked out a few more reps, but I don't have a spotter, so... As you can see, I dropped the resistance bands and I just ripped it out. And I always start off with the left side, which is my weakest side, like I stated before in a lot of my videos. I'm trying to, with those unilateral movements, trying to make sure my left side catches up or stays equal to my right side of my body. And if, as you can see here, with this angle of the video, you can see the contraction of my pectoral muscles a lot more coming across, bringing that arm across my body.
and I went ahead and did full plates without resistance bands and like I said before know your limits with the resistance bands I knew I wouldn't be wouldn't be able to do this so understand your limits when you're doing your training sessions especially if you have a part if you don't have a part My last working set for plates, you know, lateral on the right side. Then I went ahead and did a drop set of two plates with the resistance bands. Now, if you don't have resistance bands, what I would recommend doing if you have a spotter is negatives. So let's just say you are on four plates and you did your last set. Go ahead and have your spotter help you lock it out and bring them down slowly help you lock them out until you fully exhaust that muscle and drop a plate drop a plate do it again drop a plate drop a plate do it again until your muscles are fully exhausted that way on that concentric movement that contraction you exhausted the muscle and then on the eccentric movement going down which is the strongest portion of your lift you basically work that area and you fully exhaust that muscle Here, what I'm doing is my superset. This is my. I didn't record all three sets. I did three sets of each, three sets of incline flies, and three sets of bench press at 135 with the resistance bands. And basically, this is my superset. So what I'm doing here is stressing those muscle fibers, and then automatically going into pumping blood into the muscle. It's just like doing push-ups after doing your flies, but honestly, push-ups became too easy for me, so I moved on to the bench press resistance band. So I'm going ahead. I'm using that isolation movement, going back to that muscle building compound movement right after, just to flush blood into the muscle system, all fibers. And my last superset was straight flies once again with a flat bench altogether i did six workouts with two supersets and usually i'll probably do seven i'll probably do one more compound movement at the very end like i said i want to i start off all my training for chest with so stretching warming up warming up stretching Get those big heavy compound movements in, then those isolation movements or those unilateral movements, then isolation movements to really focus on different areas of that pectoral muscle or whatever muscle system we're working. And then I go back to that compound movement and all I'm doing when I go back to that compound movement is flushing as much blood as possible. Because after I do my training sessions, I always flex or I always pose. And all that does is help my muscles to get harder. And eventually when you're ready to get the, the proteins in your system and your recovery, it's gonna help you to grow. And that area is gonna get bigger. So bigger, better in chest, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You can find me on IG, Jemai Miller. Facebook to my Miller or Miller Lifestyle Fitness or you can email me at Miller Lifestyle Fitness at gmail.com. Thank you.